Hey, so today we are talking about navigation. It's a great application of trigonometry. Before we start though, I want you to look at my, my protractor, okay? If my protractor is sitting like that, and I go zero up, this is a protractor for triangles, right? But if I take my pro, that's what I like about these, and take my protractor and go like this, zero's up here, up at north, and that's kind of where my compass would put me. So if I'm at north zero, and it rotates this way, east, south, west, and back to north. Let me go ahead and just draw what I call the compass rose. Up here, I'm going to draw the compass rose to start off with. Here's my compass rose. North, east, south, and west. North is zero degrees. East is 90. South is 180. West is 270 and back to 306. Okay. Anybody ever looked, been on a boat where they've got the big compass? You guys, anybody? You got the big compass and you can see it spins all the way around, right? The 360 is kind of cool. Um, we're going to take a boat trip for pretend, okay? So we're going to talk about bearing also, okay? So ship A, so two ships leave port at the same time. Ship A travels at a bearing of north, 25 degrees towards the east. So think about this. It's going to face north. You watch my finger. And then it's going to rotate towards the east. So it's going to kind of go that direction. Makes sense? And we're going to draw this picture, okay? Sh ship B is going to travel south, okay, this way, and travels at a bearing of 40 degrees towards the east. So the one ship's heading this way, the other half ship is heading this way. So when I draw a picture, because I need to draw a semi accurate picture, I'm going to put port right about there, because I kind of know where they're heading. One's heading this direction. The other's heading this direction, so I'm going to put port right about there so it fits. So both ships are going to look at their compasses, which is going to be right here at port. So I like to draw what I call the compass rose. I call the compass rose. There's my north, east, south, and west, okay? So ship A, let's put ship A in. Ship A travels north 25 degrees at 12 knots. Okay, let's see if I can do that, okay? Well, ship A is going to look at its compass. So, ship A is sitting at port, and ship A is going to go north and rotate. Everybody watching? Everybody watching? 25 degrees. See? North, 25 degrees towards the east. Ship A is heading that direction. 25 degrees towards the east. There's east, north, 25 degrees towards the east, okay? Now 12 knots, so what I'll do is I'll just, just actually draw this 12, because speed and length can become the same thing eventually, okay? So I'm gonna take my ruler, draw this 12. It's gonna go off my page, so maybe I'll scale it down. I'll draw it six and call it 12. You guys okay with that? Otherwise, it's not gonna fit. So I'll draw it six. Call it 12, okay? Because I'm going to scale it down. It's just not going to fit. I can do that. 25 degrees here and 12, a length of 12. I'll let you catch up. Ship A. Ship B. Let's see what's going on with Ship B. Ship B travels south. 40 degrees for these. So ship B is looking south. So I'm going to take my protractor and I'm looking south. Okay, I'm looking south right here. Looking south. And then I'm rotate 40 degrees towards the east. So I'm going to go 40. We're going towards the east. So I'm looking south 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm really heading this direction. Okay, I look south, but then I rotate 40 degrees towards the east. Am I doing okay? Now, I'm going to draw this 8, but I scaled down, so I'll really draw it 4, and I'll call it 8, okay? Should be, there's 8, and that's 40 degrees, okay? Now, they're going to travel for 3 hours. So what I could, but I won't, what I could do is I could just draw this three times longer, but I'm not going to do that because, you know, it doesn't have to, 
I don't have to draw it three times long. I'm just going to multiply it by three. I'm going to say, okay, well, now for, after three hours, this ship has gone 36 nautical miles. And after three hours, this ship has gone 24 nautical miles. How's that? Okay, I don't need to draw it longer. I just need to multiply the numbers. And then it's a scale draw. So almost like Google Map where you zoom yourself out, right? Now, how far apart are they? Well, that would be this distance here. Let's call that C, okay? Well, I do not have a pair of opposites. I don't at all. But I can find, I want to find this interior angle here, okay? I want to find this interior angle. And I know that 25 and this has to be 65 degrees because 25 and 65 makes 90, right? Northeast, right? And 40 and 50 degrees between south and east. You okay with that, right? 90 degrees. So 40 and 50 has to make 90. 25 and 65 has to make 90. So then the central angle here happens to be 115 degrees, right? So it's 115 degrees. Okay. Now, what I do have is side angle side. So I know side angle side. So if I know the side angle side, I can use the law of cosines. And I'll say it and then I'll write it down. It is opposite squared, and this is in your notes, equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus two times your adjacent times your adjacent times the cosine of the angle. Okay, remember we learned that last week. So I'm not going to write that down. It's in your notes, but I'm going to now put the problem down. Okay, so I'm going to go C squared, opposite squared equals adjacent squared, which is 36, right? 36 because we went for three hours. 36 squared plus my other adjacent squared, which is 24 squared minus 2 times my adjacent, which is 36, times my other adjacent, which is 24, times the cosine of my angle, which is 115 degrees. Again, I'll let you catch up, okay? So I'm just using the law of cosines. Opposite squared equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus 2 times adjacent times adjacent times the cosine of the angle. Well, okay, I'm going to use my calcul calculator. Make sure you guys are in degree mode, otherwise it's going to mess you all up, okay? 36 squared plus... 4 squared plus, oops, not plus, minus, subtract 2 times 36 times 24 times the cosine, 15 degrees, and I get a pretty big number. But that's C squared, right? That's a huge number. That doesn't, that doesn't make any relevance. But that C squared equals my 2,602 point blah, 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 blah. So, of course, I'll take the square root of that, square root of that. Oops, square root of that answer, and I get about 51. Now, that seems more reasonable, okay, as far as my answer. So I get an answer about 51 nautical miles. Okay, what do you think? Can you do that Friday on your test? Okay, that's not so bad, is it? Okay, you guys ready to turn the page? So today's my application day of trig, and there's tons of applications, including finding the area of this parallelogram, or this quadrilateral, quadrilateral, okay? So before we even start this thing, we need to know this, the area of our triangle, because we don't really have an area of this thing, but an area of triangle is one half our adjacent times our other adjacent times the sine of an angle. Okay, that's the formula I want to use predominantly in this problem. So the trick would be to divide this quadrilateral into two triangles. Okay, so what I'll do is I can divide it here or here. It does not, it does not matter. I'm going to divide it here. It really doesn't matter where you divide it. So I'm going to divide it here. Okay. I want everybody to do that and then listen. I'm going to say something important, okay? 
I did not divide this angle in half. I did not divide this angle in half. I don't know what this is or this is. I, I have no idea, but I'm going to find out. Um, this is 130 degrees. I did not divide this in half. They don't even look divided in half. You guys agree with that? So let's look first at triangle one. Triangle one is actually pretty easy because I've got my adjacent. I've got my adjacent and my angle, right? So I want to find the area of triangle one. And then I want to find. Then I want to find the area of triangle two. Okay. But let's do the easy one first. Triangle one, triangle two, and then I'll add them together. Okay. That'd be my goal. So first of all, triangle one area. Triangle one, one half adjacent, 28 times the other adjacent, 25 times the sine of its angle, which is 110. Okay, that's easy. That's easy. So 0.5 times 28 times 25 times the sine, 110 degrees, right? I have a 328.9 for an area. 328.9 centimeters squared, okay? Now I'm going to come back to that, okay? I'm going to come back to that because that's going to be something I'm going to need to add the two areas, okay? Now, I might even circle that so I know I'm coming back to it, okay? Now let's keep, let's take a look at triangle two. The problem with triangle two, if we're going to use this formula, one half adjacent times adjacent times sine, we don't, we don't know much at all. Um, I've got one side, that's it. One side, I would like to find this side, and I'd like to find this angle, okay? To use this formula, I've got my 20. I don't know this side, let's call this C. I don't know this angle, let's call this angle theta. So I've got some work to do. So first, I'm gonna find C, because I can find C by the law of cosines, kind of just exactly what we did over here exactly what we did over here, but we'll do it for this problem, okay? So I'm going to go, okay, opposite squared is equal to adjacent squared plus my other adjacent squared minus 2 times my adjacent times my other adjacent times the cosine of my angle, 110, okay? All right, very similar to what we did on the front page. I'm just going to need to use my calculator to get this. 28 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 28, whoops, times 25 times the cosine of 110. And of course, I'm going to take the square root of that because that's way too big for that side, but that c squared equals that, right? So I've got c squared equals 1,887.8, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get what c is. So I'll get C is equal to, okay, square root of that answer, square root, hold on, square root of that answer, um, about 43.4, so 43.4. All right, now why did I do that? Well, this is 43.4, okay? Let's take a look, the formula for a triangle. One half adjacent, I got an adjacent, times adjacent, I got I got the two adjacent sides. I got that side and that side, but I don't know this angle. So how am I gonna get this angle? Well, if I can find this angle, let's call this angle, what do you wanna call this, angle A? If I can get angle A, if I can find angle A, I'd subtract from 130, right? If I can get angle A, I'd subtract from 130, and then it'd have theta, and then I can use my formula, okay? So I'm gonna get angle A from a pair of opposites. See my opposites? Opposites, 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 opposites. So if you have a pair of opposites, I always like the law of sines if I have opposites. So I have opposites, opposite, opposite, and then we'll set up my other opposites, right? I've got my opposites and opposites. Okay, so to find angle A, we're going to go sine of angle A over 25, right? Sine of an angle over its opposite side is equal to sine of 110 over its opposite, which is 43.4, okay? And then I'm gonna solve, okay? And we'll put that up. And I have sine of A equals 25 
times the sine of 110 divided by 43.4. Okay, am I, do it? am I going too fast? I'm okay. okay. Slow down for a second. So my goal right now is to find angle A, right? So, Abby, just slow me down. Say, slow down, Mr. Davies, anytime you want, okay? Close your parentheses. Always close your parentheses, okay? Divided by 43.4, okay? So I get a decimal. Kind of anticipated that because I want the sign inverse of that answer, right? And so angle A is about 32.8. We'll round it up. Angle A is about 32.8 degrees, okay? Now, let me back up. Let's see what we got. It's 32.8. So let's go back up. To find the area of the whole thing, I need this triangle plus this triangle. I'm getting close, getting close. So to find the area of this triangle, I need adjacent, adjacent, and I need this angle. But I'm just about there. To get theta, we're just going to go 130 degrees minus 32.8. And that's going to give me that angle right there, correct? So what is that? 180 minus 32.8. I get an answer about 147. Point two. Uh, let's see, what color do I hit? I, I got blue color, okay. So this angle is 100, and, can't be 147. Oh, that's because I, oh, so sorry, 130 minus, I was going to say, that doesn't make any sense. 32.8. How about 90, I should clear. How about 97.2? Okay, I'm almost there. It's a big problem, isn't it? Okay, let's see. Let's go back to what I want to do, okay? I want the area of triangle one plus the area of triangle two. To get the area of triangle two, I need one half adjacent times adjacent times sine of the angle. And I can do that now, right? So I can find then triangle two. So I'm gonna go area triangle two. I'll go one half adjacent times the other adjacent, which is my 43.4, times the sine of this 97.2. 5 times 20 times 43.4 times the sine of 97.2. Now you get about 430.6. Okay, let me circle that in blue. Okay, I'm almost done, right? So triangle one was 328.9. Triangle two was 430. Add the two, and I finally found the area of this quadrilateral. So total area, area is triangle one plus triangle two, which we know is our 328.9 plus my 430.6 grand total of, I don't know, tell you in a second, 328.9 plus 430.6. I get a grand total of, wow, I finally got it, 759.6 centimeters squared. That's a big problem, isn't it? That is a big problem. Okay, homework today is going to be a worksheet. Okay, just two problems, that's all. I mean, you don't, don't you think that's probably enough? Just two problems, right? Just these two problems. So, homework is nearly identical to the same problem we did, and on the back side, nearly identical to the same problem we did, okay? All right, that's what I have. Let's try and get as much done in class.